In this video I will show you how you can use the envelope theorem to check how a maximum value function changes if you change a parameter. Let's start with the statement of the envelope theorem. If you have a function f of x and t, which is a function that you will maximize with respect to x and you have some parameter t, then if you obtain if you obtain x star as a function of t which corresponds to the maximum of this function with respect to x star then you can create f of x star t and t which is your maximum value function. This means you plug the optimal value into your objective function and you obtain the maximum value function which now depends on t. Now, if we want to see how this maximum value function changes, if we change parameter t, we can take a derivative, provided this derivative is continuous around the value of t that we take the derivative with respect to. Okay, so let's do that. So we get df of x t and t dt which is equal to df dx times dx star dt plus df dt where here the first term is the derivative of this function with respect to x and then, because of the chain rule, because x star depends on t, I take the derivative of x star with respect to t, and then I have the direct derivative, which only depends on this part here. And the envelope theorem tells us that this term here is zero from our maximization. Because x star is a critical value of this function, we know that at this optimal point the derivative of this function must be equal to zero and so if we want to know how this maximum value function changes if we change parameter t then we just need to look at the der direct derivative of this function. Okay, so let's apply this to an example. Let's take the following example. We take a utility maximization with a budget constraint. So that is u of x1 and x2 is equal to a times x1 times x2 such that x1 greater or equal to 0, x2 greater or equal to 0, and p1 x1 plus p2 x2 is less than or equal to income i. Okay, so we have this utility maximization problem subject to three constraints, two non-negativity constraints, and this budget constraints. Okay, before we now start with the Lagrangian, we need to check the constraint qualification. Let's start with these two constraints. In particular, this utility function is strictly increasing in x1 and in x2. This means that if x1 is 0, I can increase this utility function if I increase x1 a little bit. Furthermore, if x1 or x2 is equal to 0, this utility is strictly 0 meaning I could increase both x1 and x2 just a little bit such that this inequality is still satisfied provided i is not equal to 0 and I get a strictly positive utility. This means that these two constraints are not binding and I can ignore them. Similarly this last constraint as I just said this utility function here 
is strictly increasing both in x1 and x2 and you can verify that looking at the gradient provided x1 and x2 are positive and a is a positive constant which we will assume as all the other parameters are just positive numbers okay now that means that if this one is not binding we can increase x1 or x2 just by the amount so this constraint is now binding. We will end up with a high utility which still satisfies this constraint and so this constraint will always be binding. So we simplify this problem by eliminating these two constraints and by making this an equality constraint. Okay, now we only have one constraint to check for the constraint qualification. If we take the derivative of this constraint with respect to x1 and x2, I will simply get p1 and p2 as my gradient vector. This means that this vector has full rank or rank 1 if either p1 or p2 is not equal to 0. If both are 0, we have a 0 vector and the constraint qualification is not satisfied. Okay. So in general, provided these are strictly positive, and this one is strictly positive, we're all fine. So let's set up our Lagrangian. L is equal to A times X1, X2 minus lambda P1, X1 plus P2, X2 minus I. And this is our Lagrangian. Now based on this, we can set up first order conditions and this will allow us to get some x1 star, x2 star, and lambda star. We always need to have lambda star as well because we transformed this two variable constraint maximization problem with one constraint because we simplified it, these two don't matter, into a three variables x1, x2, and lambda, unconstrained maximization problem. Okay, now that we have our optimal values, we can set up the maximum value function. Well, given that the Lagrangian will take the same value as this utility function for every x star uh, and lambda star, because at the optimum value, this constraint here will be zero, these two functions are actually equivalent. That means that our maximum value function is simply x1 star, x2 star, and lambda star. Okay? So it's the Lagrangian where I plug in the optimum values. And these optimum values depend on a, p1, p2, and i all the parameters in this model. Okay, let's see how this maximum value changes if we change any of these four parameters. For simplicity, let's start with A. Let me erase this to have some more space. Okay, from the envelope theorem we know because we have an unconstrained problem with three parameters, we can just take the derivative of this with respect to all these three parameters, multiply it by the derivative uh, of x1 with respect to a, x2 with respect to a, and lambda with respect to a at this optimal value, at the star values, plus the direct derivative. Let's do that. So we get dl star dA is equal to dL dx1 times dx1 star dA plus dL dx2 times dx2 star dA plus dL d lambda times d lambda star dA plus dL dA, which is the direct derivative. Okay, now from our maximization here, we immediately know that 
we have three first order conditions in here. So we have three terms that are equal to zero. Now I will not invoke yet that it needs to be continuous around A, but I will talk about that in a moment once we set everything up. Okay, so now we have three terms that are multiplied by zero, so this term that simplifies to dl dA, the direct derivative of this Lagrangian respect to A, which is simply equal to x1 star times x2 star, because A only shows up in this objective function up here, which is x1 times x2, and at the optimal value we have this. Similarly, we can do it for p1, p2, and i. I will skip this step here, because it's clear that we have a lot of zeros that we can ignore. So we have dl dp1, which is just equal to the direct derivative, and the direct derivative of this Lagrangian with respect to p1 is minus lambda times x, x1 star. Similarly, dl dp2 is equal to minus lambda star x2 star. And finally, dl di will be equal to minus lambda minus 1, so just lambda star. And again, these will have actual values in the end, so it could be, if I give the parameters some value, so 5, 10, and so on, maximizing this will give me an explicit value for all these derivatives. Okay, now I talked a little bit about the issue that if I want to employ this envelope theorem, this maximum value function here, where I have all x1 star, x2 star, and lambda star in here, needs to be continuously differentiable around A, or the A we use to maximize. What does this mean? Well, we could have two constraints here. We could have this constraint with lambda 1 plus the second constraint. What this means is our optimal solution might have this constraint binding, this one not binding, this one binding, this one not binding, both binding or neither binding. Well, what could happen is specifically that if I change this parameter A too much, I will switch my solution. I will switch from this one not being binding to suddenly being binding, and this one the reverse, from binding to not binding. This means that suddenly this lambda, which could have been any positive number, has to be equal to zero. In contrast, this lambda here was, not, uh, was any number and now is strictly zero. So we have the problem that this lambda suddenly switches because some constraints that were binding become not binding and reverse. And that's where this A would not be continuous if we have any of the binding constraints or un not binding constraints changing to become binding or not binding. Thank you for watching.